so the name Cadence is a reflection of this sort of natural rhythm that we see in every facet of the restaurant. You see a sort of a natural movement of dishes where it flows through savory bites into dessert where flavors are not necessarily overwhelming others. No matter what you're eating, you should want to take another bite because your palate is stimulated. So that's kind of always the goal. having been working together for the past six years, have kind of similar ideas about food, and that kind of lends to the creative process where you just, things kind of find their way naturally. You know, we all view this as a very personal project, so with that, I think the food can lend itself to different styles and different, different cultures, different types of cuisine, because it's all things that are very personal to us as cooks. The choose your own four course was definitely like a happy medium. For us, keeping a strong identity per category is important. The first courses are gonna be fresh vegetable, you know, mainly raw or fresh preparations of fish and seafood, tartars. The second course being something a little more along the lines of a pasta course, heartier filling. The third course, the entree course, being more protein driven. A lot of that is gonna be a beef dish, fish dish, or a poultry, and then after that dessert. And we don't want to have somebody walking out feeling like bogged down, and Sam does a really great job with that. One of the biggest crimes that a pastry chef can do is to load you up with sugar and fat and leave the guests feeling dissatisfied. I naturally like more savory flavors and less sweet. It's a natural finish to what they've already been building up to. Well, we don't have necessarily a traditional pasta on the, the menu, so we do a, a fried cauliflower, but it's gonna look like you're getting a, a bowl of pasta with ragu almost. We do a fermented pork sausage with pork and a ragu atop this cauliflower that we hit with lemon juice, some pickled peppers, a lobster batarga, which is poached lobster roe. That looks really intense on the plate, and we grate it to cover the whole thing. So when you get it, it's this big blanket of bright red lobster roe that looks almost like grated cheese in a way. But as you eat through, it's gonna create a really interesting salinity, a really deep flavor that you, know, you get the familiarity of a bowl of pasta, but as you eat through it, it's going to be something very different from what your, your mind kind of processes. We're not just looking to you know, put dishes on the menu that are so out there and progressive that someone looks at it and they just they don't really know what to think of it. So I think playing off that idea of like, this is something that's familiar to something that people see in their everyday dining experience, but then we also benefit by exposing them to a new technique. Yeah, the duck uh, is, is definitely one of the dishes that I think kind of represents what we do. The duck is, it's an Alina duck. Alina ducks are really cool because they are a crossbreed of uh, Pekin and Muscovy. So the Pekin is going to help give it a clean, uh, more tender flavor. The Muscovy is going to bring a little bit of of game to the table. So the ducks, we age them here for about seven days. We roast them on the bone in our oven. So they're roasted in a wooden charcoal oven to mid-rare. They get carved off the bone. We render the skin so it's nice and crispy. The legs are clone feed and then they get fried. So nice crispy skin topped with a, a really nice streusel of sunflower seeds, a bunch of spices. The breast is sliced and served with a, a spiced duck jus. The accompaniments alongside of it change. We're still definitely hitting off of some really great high summer flavors. So we have really beautiful baby squash from a good farmer friend of ours and blistered shishitos. We're just you know simply charring all that on our French top, finishing it with a little bit of that streusel, a nice chili oil inspired by like that chili oil condiment you get on the table at the Szechuan restaurant, and then a, a bunch of fried garlic. So you're getting that like sweet, spicy, savory, really umami chili oil over the top of everything. The rice milk shaved ice is kind of a play on Philadelphia water ice, but using a very practical tool for making kakigori, which is Japanese shaved ice. The challenge with the shaved ice is that it has to be as complex, impactful, and satisfying as the other desserts. It just requires finding bold flavors and interesting textures that work in a vegan context. So really the initial inspiration was the sake lees. I just pureed sake lees with cooked rice grits to make what we call rice pudding. So a little bit of black currant puree and then spoon the shaved rice milk, which has been shaved on the kakigori machine, and then kind of 
douse the ice with the Concord grape syrup and then sprinkle more of the streusel and then fresh grapes. We've got fresh tart green grapes from one of our foraging friends. It's, it's kind of this almost kind of haunting flavor that's, uh, that's just very interesting. Our goal is to really put the experience first. You know, as three chef owners, I would love to say we, we don't want to come across as incredibly chef driven. We want it to be experience driven. We all sort of have the same basic vision, which is to just source good products, not really like make it too complicated, just execute it well through like really good technique and be really honest about what we're trying to do, which is just really give people a, a very like true representation of, of who we are and what the food is.